All right, welcome back to another Koenji Shan Reviews. And recently I've been picking up a lot of retro and vintage manga magazines, usually for some sort of reference or something that I'm looking for. For example, I picked up 10 volumes of Puchi Flower, Puchi Furawa, uh, because there was one release by one mangaka, one story, just a one-off, a one-shot, by one mangaka that I couldn't find anywhere else. So I picked this up. Similarly, I picked up this Pucci Margaretto, or Petite Margaret, for a similar reason. Um, I always like getting Axe uh, copies when I can. Uh, this one's pretty dope because here we have one of the finest Eroguro mangaka of them all, Hanawa, with this big pull-out spread. There's a couple other really cool things in here as well, which I will have to go through this one in detail at some point. Um, I picked up Cosmo Comic. Cosmo Comic. This is kind of an SF-themed comic, which we'll talk a little bit about today as well. I picked up all seven volumes of these just yesterday, actually. Sometimes I'll pick up stuff like Calm or Garo, usually just for reference. For example, this Calm has Hino Hideshi's first ever published story in it. Or this Garo, I think I picked up for the story called Handcuffs by Tsuge Yoshiharu, specifically. Um, then I have some other stuff here like Comic Again, Com Ik Again, so it's released by Tezuka, uh, part of the Com series. Um, I like to pick up the old adult, mm, they're kind of directed towards adult male, adult men uh, manga comics. This is called Manga Comic. So uh, there's some wild stuff in here and I think I picked this up for also a specific re reason which was I think a Koga Shin, uh, Shinichi release kind of hmm. I'd have to look now I'm curious I think I talked about this once before yep there we go no it was a Hamashinji I think there we go Hamashinji ah, a little bit disorganized today guys sometimes I'll pick stuff up for example like big comic comics for men or big comic original these are like neat 200 yen each or two bucks each and uh Sometimes you dig through them, you find some cool stuff in those. But today, let's take a look at Comic Yaro. There's a lot of cool stuff in here. It's almost all one shots, so it's fun to talk about them. And let's get into it. All right, let's take a look at Comic Yaro. This is dense, 402 pages. So we're not going to go through every page, of course. That would take all day, but I will highlight some of the better parts of it. Um, you can see some of the main contributors here. Ishimori Shotaro or Kamimura uh, Kazuo, Saito Takao, um, Akatsuka Fujio, uh, Sonoyama Junji, and Mochizuki Sankia, Mikia, Mikia, sorry, Mochizuki. I was just looking at some Mochizuki stuff at Mandaraki and Shibuya yesterday too, so... Not too sure why I'm spacing out, but here, let's take a look at some of it. I actually picked this up for one particular reason. I guess in 19, in August of 1977, windsurfing, windsay, windsurfing, windsurfing was a pretty popular summertime sport because they have a, a whole section here on windsurfing. Of course, this is directed towards men. This is a men's manga magazine so there's going to be lots of pictures of girls and lots of stuff directed towards men also these guys are kind of like an ob club an old boys club because they've all worked together i think they're all kind of buddy buddies there is akatsuka with tamori both of whom are in here and that's his vagabond character of course from his famous manga there they're playing baseball out drinking here we have uh, Fujiko Fujio giving a speech at some party or something like that and then we get into some weirdness here we have some monkeys monkeys were really popular in the 70s as well remember any which way but loose was that it the Burt Reynolds and the monkey yeah I that wait 
What's the name? Yeah, I can't remember. Anyways, this is Two Monkeys Making Gyoza. It's a follow-along recipe so men can make gyoza at home. Um, that monkey's getting drunk. It's pretty wild. 402 pages. You gotta get some monkeys in there, man. Um, there's Sonoyama Junji. Um, we're not gonna go through all of his stuff. Kind of comic, classic comic style. But I actually picked this up originally because I opened it up to this, this Kasamashiro. And he is an Edo manga creator, mangaka. And we can see some of the stuff here. There's a skeleton showing his bone. Really hard to find his stuff. I actually have one thing of his. The doctor here is saying, you're not pregnant. The culprit is a toy frog and i imagine that is some reference to a sex toy here the girl's saying stop i believe that you would kill yourself for me and of course it would not be uh erotic manga without an octopus so that's why i initially picked it up i actually have here Uh, Nozoki Tenshi, Peeping Angel. It's a pretty cool cover though. Uh, I can't really show too much of this because it is erotic manga and I do not want to get kicked off YouTube. But uh, yeah, some of the stories are like husband wife stories, but a lot of them are creepers attacking people. Um, some of them get into the kind of horror genre, which of course I'm a huge horror fan. Sometimes they get their just dues. Like in this case, this guy was blackmailing a woman for sex and he gets ran down by a car at the end in a hit and run. This one here is looking like it's not gonna fare well for the woman. What else did I check out here? Kind of this creeper dude. You can see he's kind of like a monster. So some kaiki or some kind of bizarre uh, stories in here and what else did I bookmark this one the girl that he is having sex time with turns into a serpent yokai or monster which is pretty sick so I always kind of got to like it when the creepy guys get what they deserve Man, I have to really open these up carefully otherwise I'm gonna open up to a page that's way too sexy here we have a couple girls strolling through the woods and they're confronted by a man with a meat cleaver. So I do not think this is going to go well either. That's some Kasumashiro. I actually paid $35 for this at Mandarake Mania at Nakano Broadway because it's very hard to find his stuff and I figured I should have at least one thing around. Uh, let's get back. So our first story here is by Saito Takao, of course, of Gogo 13 fame. I have actually a cool Gogo 13 reference here. Hmm. Well, that's not Gogo, but there he, there's the man himself. Ah, maybe, and here's some of his artwork. I'm just kind of showing this for reference. See all those lines, all the movement he has, and ninjas, bushi. All the stuff we're gonna see in our comic Yato story here. And there's, of course, Gorugo 13. It's good to have reference books around. This is the Manga Daizukan, or the big encyclopedia of manga. This story, though, we're not going to go through the whole thing. It's 100 pages, so it takes up a quarter of 
the of this issue it starts off with a ninja approaching these three guys the ninjas from outside the guys are from the local daimyo and they have a battle this is kind of a cool scene of a classic crucifixion but there's a twist something happens in the next upcoming panels which is pretty wild and then we have five ninjas come in at one point and i just wanted to show you the battle scenes you see all this movement all these lines a lot like what i just showed in that little manga encyclopedia so before gogol 13 he did a lot of samurai ninja type stories which are always fun uh, mochizuki mikia this one i'm not going to really go through i'm not really into sports manga to be honest and this is kind of a sports manga plus alpha um maybe a little bit of a mystery thing going on in there but uh he did some great mystery suspense action suspense like action suspense and some horror stuff back in the day i was just looking at some at mandarake yesterday and uh a bit expensive you know in the range of 25 to 35 dollars for a lot of those old retro ones from the 60s but let's move ahead to ishimori shotaro this is a wild story. Of course, he is also one of the main contributors and probably founders of this, which I'll get into at the end when I cover some of this Cosmo comic. But Yaro Kari is a uh, hermit crab. So this story is kind of the story of this night worker, and she works at a go-go bar, which is really a, a J.O. establishment. Um, handies, man, handies. And, uh, she's got a boyfriend at home who's a quote unquote writer, but he's, uh, really lazy and doesn't really do anything. And the hermit crab thing is, so hermit crabs, they'll have a shell. They'll also, anemones will attach themselves to the shell, usually one. And then when they change their shell, the anemone will follow. They have a symbiotic relationship. And he's paralleling that with, in this story, with, uh... so here we have some ex explanation of the yarokari, of the hermit crab, and the symbiotic relationship it has with anemones or sponges. And he is a kind of a sponge because he sponges off this woman who makes all the money in the house. And then he goes on and cheats on her. And then this is her confronting the other woman. There's also some sexy time stuff going on in here. But it was kind of weird how he kind of paralleled a nature theme together with his story of this loser writer taking advantage of this girl who is clearly in love with him. Um, Akatsuka Fujio, of course, uh, he is famous for uh, Bagabon, also Akatsuka Musashi, the samurai? Am I kind of conflating? Eh, eh, anyways, we're not going to go through this too much, but you can see his style. You know what, let's go back. We should do this. Let's go back to, so this is the... The Ishimori. Ishimori, Ishimori. This is Gendai Manga. This is a 15 volume series. This is number 13. And then they did two series of 15 volumes. There's also Gendai Manga 2. Um, Gendai Manga 1 was released in 1970. And this is a whole Ishimori Shotaro uh, collection. Pretty cool. Hardback. Um, I have almost all of both of these. And then they also did another series called uh, Gendai Comics, which has Umez, has Hirata, has a number of other contributors. And I think that's a 15 volume set as well. This is hard cover. It's a little insert in here. Um, but I'll just show you some of his artwork that is a bit different.
This is his June collection, which is just a bunch of artwork. And Tasogare no Kuni, the country, twilight country. I just wanted to go back to that front page so you can kind of see that from Yarokari. Very surrealist. And I'll skip ahead to um, maybe the next one. This is a great story, Nagai Ame, or The Long Rain. It's the story of a very long rainy day, two neighbors. Who are swordsmen. It's very slow at first, but then we find out that one of them murdered his wife. hiding her under the tatami mat. He calls over the neighbor, confesses, which leads to an awesome sword fight. So here, again, you can see the style is much different from Yadokari. Ishimori had a wide ranging style, a wide range of styles, I should say. So I like this style, his like kind of samurai stuff, but then he also did stuff like this, which is just very cartoony. This one's a science fiction theme, but still very cartoony, right? So that's Ishimori Shotaro from Gendai Manga. All right, now moving forward. And I bookmarked too much stuff. I'm gonna keep you guys here all day. Also, we have some, it's really hard to read, but there's Kamimura Kazuo. This is a great story. It's kind of made me appreciate him more and want to pick up more stuff by Kamimura. This is the story of a woman working in a bar Kind of, she reminisces about when she was a child and her mother would, so in the first scene, let me go back to the first scene really quick. It's kind of important, important to the story. It opens with her eating the inside of a raw egg. And then she reminisces about her mother doing it as a child, being dirt poor in the countryside and floating the egg down the river and how enjoyable it was to watch. Um, a man comes into the bar who she ends up hooking up with to not give too much of it away. And it turns out that he is also from the same area she is from and he happened to have eggs. This is the story of her mother's death eggs in his bag that he was taking that he had carried with him from Fukui or wherever it was that they were from kind of reminds me of Tampopo the movie and then she deposits the egg in a small pond out behind the love hotel and remembers her childhood of course, uh, Kamimura did Kyojin Kanke was a popular one. I think I have some more stuff right here. There's some Kamimura. 
Gotta love the red and black two color. Two color? Yeah, that's it in here. Kamimura Kazuo. I'm gonna end up keeping you guys here all day if I don't get through this. Uh, maybe we'll skip Iwamoto. Iwamoto is who I was thinking of. I was conflating the two. Iwamoto Musashi. He did the Samurai series. And this is just about a uh, statue's butt. Here's Tamori. It's a little Tamori section here. Looks pretty much the same today as he did back then. He's always looked middle-aged. He's getting pretty old these days, though. I must admit. This is Imamura Naoto, who is a longtime assistant to Saito Takao. And this is one of his stories. Um, probably not gonna, it's just about two guys that go out to a go go club, spend too much money. One gets a knuckle sandwich. And this story was really fun too. Narishima Sei. Narijima Sei. Maybe. Um, this is a wild story about, it's kind of under the baseball backdrop, but it really is about um, blackmail. This dude's over here doing upskirt shots. Again, I don't read a lot of sports stuff, but I like mystery stuff. And one more thing to show you really quickly. This is a wild story. This is by Toyama Shigeru. And he only did like three things. And this was one of them. This is called Panic. And uh, at 8.17. So in the gutter on the next page, we have a little ex explanation saying something to the effect of just what's going to happen at 8.17. And we have this TV producer, he gets a phone call, he finds out that his son has died, his son has asthma, has some sort of asthma attack, he goes back to the hometown for the funeral of his dead son, and then he recalls, recounts the story of his wife dying three years earlier, trying to care for their weak son, or getting tired, so maybe she killed herself, or something like that. Um, they don't really go into detail. Then he finally comes back to work, but he's a different person. One night he goes out, he play, pays this woman of the night to take this man for a ride. See, he's carrying a gun here, so he must be either a detective or some sort of a gang member or something. And he sneaks into the room and steals the gun. So this is a part of his elaborate plan for whatever's going to happen at 8.17. And he, one night during a show broadcast, he takes the booth hostage, makes the announcer say that America has launched three nuclear missiles at the Soviet Union. Remember, this is still during the Cold War, Soren, and the Soviets fired back three missiles, so we are in the midst of nuclear war, and all hell breaks loose out in the streets. The GHI or the SDF come in, highways on fire, people rioting, boats, airplanes, chaos ensues everywhere, and people panic. And that is his story. Um, at the back here, we have some adverts for. Of course, Saito Taco. There's always some crosswords in the back of these, some puzzles kind of mixed in throughout. You have like stuff like here we have like kind of sexy stories from readers. 
or some puzzles. Because it's a magazine for men to occupy their little brains for an amount of time. Occupied my brain. Um, so if we look at here, like I was mentioning, we have Ishimori, we have uh, Kamimura, we have Saito, we have a number of people. Akazuka, and here, Cosmo, which I got all seven issues of this. It was a short run. Um, a lot of the stuff is unfinished, I've heard, but I'm still going to read it all. And I'll cover this down the road, but look at who's in it. Ishimori, Kamimura, Saito, Akatsuka. So a lot of the same guys, after the comic Yato run, they got together and they formed this. It only lasted for seven issues, as I said, and then... They went bankrupt or they put it on hiatus, never to return to it again. This is kind of a mystery science fiction theme, but it's got a lot of their classic stories in it. So, for example, the Kami, the Kami Mura story is not science fiction, but they always have some science fiction theme going on in them, like, you know, Easter Island, Moise, or uh, the pyramids, or something wild like that. So I will get into this on another occasion. Thanks to everyone who subs, likes, and shares. I hope you dug that. Um, if you have any ideas or something that you want to see, then let me know in the comments below. If you have a question, ask. I respond to them all. And I really do appreciate all of you that sub. It helps out a ton. And until next time, matane.